since it is the month of October, I was wondering if you guys have had good experiences or stories with haunted houses. Surreal, uh, we have the best example. Well. I think the one the story that you're referring to is that I worked a day at a, uh, at a haunted house once. Ah, <laughs> uh, too scary. Uh, which my job was mostly... If you can spend the whole day in the haunted house, <laughs> you'll own it. This was supposed to be for uh, someone else's uh, drama class extra credit, which he didn't tell us. But he was like, oh, it'd be real fun if we worked at a haunted house. And it ended up being like something he, I guess, had to do for class. And we just did because he told us to. You got uh, foisted. Yeah. But it, but anyway, uh, my job was to be in the second story of the house. And there was a bed that from which a car, the head of a car would emerge. And so my the job. The head of a car? Yeah. <laughs> the part the that you get metal? inside? Well, like the, the, the front of a car. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the what head. I would do is I would. <laughs> Leave him alone, Kirk. You're such a dick. <laughs> it's really funny. Sorry. Uh, so <laughs> my, my job was to grab sort of that contraption mm -hmm. and just sort of push it forward every time someone came by. Yeah. And when and it would it... crown, it would scare people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Zero. Sometimes words are hard, okay? Uh, <laughs> all of that is to say that you guys went to a Resident Evil haunt. Yes, <laughs> I was trying to set oh, you up the whole time. I you don't want to hear, <laughs> yeah. hear about the head of a bed? <laughs> well, because I told you the story in Japan when we uh, went there, so I thought that's, that's, that's what you were referring to, and no. I thought you were going to tell me. I was hoping for the most gaming relevant thing. When we were in <laughs> Japan, <laughs> okay. in Odaiba, which we hinted at earlier in the episode and all that stuff, uh, we were at Sega's Joypolis Haunted House is what yeah. we're talking about here. On the top floor of this amusement park, they have a Resident Evil 7 themed haunted house. And it's like, well, we only have so much money left on our cards. What do we want to spend it on? Biohazard. We have, we have to know what this biohazard haunted house is like. And so we're standing in line. There's a group of know, 10 people or so. Yeah. Um, and the tour guide only speaks Japanese and he's speaking in Japanese to the crowd getting them ready for this haunted house. They feel sorry for us English speakers. So they handed us a little note card and it said like a list of rules in English. Like, Hey, don't play grab ass in there. Don't run around. Don't mess too much with the props. Don't f with the actors type of thing. There was a sign on the wall that said no grab ass. And, and right, so exactly. And so we're like, okay, yeah, I got it. Just nodded along and played along. Handed the placard back. Then the guy handed us a second piece of paper with a note on it. And it just said, the man speaking right now is an American citizen. <laughs> okay. And so if we're looking at each other like, what are we what? supposed to do with that? <laughs> what does that mean? Is this another rule? Or is he just trying to tell us that, like, technically, the tour is in Japanese, but if we need English, we can ask him. But eventually it became clear, the second card was explaining that that guy was role-playing, and that's the speech oh. he was giving, that he was named Tommy, because hmm. he said something, something Japanese, Tommy, and mm. then everybody laughed. So it became clear that he was role playing as a character within the Resident Evil universe. That's an American citizen named Tommy. Okay, because mm -hmm. Seven takes place in the United States. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then the actual haunted house. It was kind of cool. It was a bigger space yeah. than I imagined. But they recreated a lot of the rooms from the opening areas of Resident Evil Seven. And you're walking through, uh, and there's a series of like little challenges, right? Where he's like just inferring from Japanese, like, hey, we need somebody to turn on this light in right. this hallway. Who's going to do it? Yeah. Who's going to volunteer? I got to turn, I got to pull the lever that is under the fireplace in Resident Evil 7. Classic Resident Evil 7. Yeah. That The stuff's in the demo, right? And they really build it up like something crazy is going to happen. He pulled the lever and then a ceiling fan turned on <laughs> behind us. I think, wasn't there also a noise? Maybe like, there was a noise. Or something like but they had like a VHS tape, tape mm -hmm. as well that they put in. It was a cool effect because they put in the tape. And then on the table was like a first person perspective of the rooms we had just walked through, like hinting yeah. like, okay, I know this is just a video, but when this syncs up to the door that leads to this room, mm -hmm. is somebody going to burst through? And no, there wasn't. But what was cool <laughs> about this and what was lame about this, what was lame is they had a series of fake windows that were actually TVs and they would show Resident Evil characters on it. Like you were looking outside the house and like the dad would like walk by the window. Like all obscured. Mm. Like a sh like it was like their shadow. Right. So it's like, oh, it's just a TV. Like that's mm. not really scary. But they actually had somebody dressed up, an actor, as the mother mm. character from Resident Evil 7. And then she would like chase us around this haunted house and we had to like cower in a little room. In the most like video game stealth sequence possible where she, yeah. we're all like, there's like, you know, 10 people in this one room all cowering. She walks, she basically walks into the room, goes, oh, no one's here, and then just walks away. Right. But it's so cool because it was so dimly lit, and she just had this little lantern, and it was a mask that looked just like the video game character, and it was so dimly lit. 
that you couldn't really mm. even tell it was a mask. So it really looked like the character from mm. the game. It was pretty sweet. Then you went into the garage, which was the garage from Resident Evil 7. Oh, and there's the head. It's the true. Car. Then the head of a car <laughs> busted through. <laughs> I'm serious. Busted through the wall and they blast you with air. Oh, and then cool. all the shelves fall down and they blast you with more air. And actually it was like the biggest It was extremely surprise. loud too. It was like yeah. you can tell like they had like stirred it up and there's <laughs> just it a was, lot of air it, in your face. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to Tokyo, it's in Odaiba. It's cool if you're a Resident Evil fan just to like walk through a vague recreation yeah, of that like, house. Uh, before we went in, there was a guy who, like, the, the previous group had walked out, and we yeah. sort of looked at him, of like trying to, like, we just said things to say. Ah, ah, and I gave him, were, I gave him like a thumbs up, thumbs down, just to so spend our money on went, it. Eh, yeah. <laughs> and that was, I think, my reaction. But it was still like, it was fun. Yeah, I thought it was inappropriate when Serial tackled one of those actors. Yeah, he said, no grab ass. <laughs> well, I better <laughs> get my grab ass in now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the Game Informer Show podcast. You can subscribe to the audio version and listen to new episodes airing every Thursday. We cover big games on the horizon, games that we've just reviewed. We have long-form developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So check it out every Thursday.